I study the brain um, in love. Uh, first of all, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted that you are here. Um, thank you to the people who are joining us from um, outside this room. Um, I do study the brain. I study the brain in love. And I probably, I put people in uh, brain scanners who are madly in love uh, with my colleagues, uh, Art Aaron, uh, Lucy Brown, and Bianca Acevedo. We've now put uh, 17 people who had just fallen happily in love uh, in the machine, um, fMRI, uh, 15 people who had just been rejected in love, and 17 people who were in love long term, people who were married more than uh, 21 years of marriage and still in love. Matter of fact, I think that right now, actually, I could put a lot of you in my machine, and I would find some of these brain circuits for romantic love become active. Um, I'm not going to repeat uh, really what I um, say. I've written four books on romantic love. I want to say something different today. But um, I do want to say one thing about romantic love. Um, it's a powerful brain system, I think more powerful than the sex drive. Uh, it comes from primordial parts of the brain, lo way below the cortex, um, that gives you the energy, uh, the focus, the ecstasy, the despair, and the motivation. It's a drive. It's a basic mating drive. It's a drive to win life's greatest prize, which is a mating partner. But today, I want to talk about something else. Why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? I'd written my fourth book on uh, romantic love, and um, it was a couple days before Christmas, and I got a telephone call from Match.com, the internet dating site, and they asked me to come in and talk to them two days after Christmas. And I, nothing happens in New York at Christmas, but uh, uh, so I went in, and they filed in. I wasn't even sure who was who, and in the middle of the morning, they asked me, why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? And I said, I don't know. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, psychologists certainly know that timing is important. Proximity is important. We tend to fall in love with somebody from the same socioeconomic and uh, ethnic background. Uh, that's changing, by the way. Uh, um, uh, somebody of the same general level of intelligence and good looks and education and religious and social values are important, reproductive goals, and certainly your childhood experience uh, plays a role. But you know, you can walk into a room and everybody is from your background and same level of intelligence and same level of good looks and uh, a lot of the same childhood, and you don't fall in love with all of them. Something else is missing. Something is missing here. So I began to decide that I would study personality. There's two basic um, uh, aspects of personality. Of course, with epigenetics now, we know that these are constantly in, in connection with one another. But there certainly are traits that um, you've acquired through your childhood and your education and your experiences. And also, there's a great many traits that come straight out of your biology. Uh, they now estimate that 40 to 60 percent of who you are comes out of your uh, DNA, or at least it plays an enormous role in it. So I decided what I would do is take a look at the second aspect of this, your temperament, your predispositions, and see if somehow your basic body chemistry uh, drives you to some people rather than another. So I began to go through all of the academic literature, find, looking for traits that are linked with biology that may play a role in mate choice. And I would generally go into a lot of this, but bottom line is um, there's a lot of chemicals in the brain, and, well, but most of them keep the eyes blinking or the heart beating. They're not linked with personality traits. And indeed, these four brain systems are the dopamine, serotonin, testosterone, and estrogen oxytocin systems. And each one of them is linked with a constellation of personality traits. And so I decided what I would do is try to make a questionnaire um, that measured the traits linked with each one of these brain systems, and then put this questionnaire onto a dating site, Match.com internationally, and Chemistry.com, the site that I started with, Match.com, uh, locally in the United States, and then see if I could watch who's naturally drawn to whom, whether these traits of, of biology naturally draw you to some people rather than others. I just want to say before I begin that, um, uh, that uh, we're all, I'm not talking about types. Um, these are not cubby holes. These are brain systems. We all respond to all of them. As a matter of fact, I'm working now with a, 
a geneticist from uh, Princeton University, Lee Silver, and we just studied 100,000 people on chemistry.com. 10 million people have taken the questionnaire, uh, 30,000 take it every week, so I can really study, um, I study them regularly. Um, it's all anonymous, but anyway, I study the numbers. And um, uh, in this study of 100,000 people, no two people took this 56 question questionnaire the same way. I've never met two people who are this similar, uh, uh, or, or are alike. However, there's patterns to nature, there's patterns to personality, and I wanted to find out if there's also patterns to mate choice. So I'm going to go very rapidly through these four broad styles of thinking and behaving, through the genetics that is linked with each one of these constellations of personality traits, and then uh, wind up with telling you uh, the patterns of mate choice. Uh, the dopamine system, these are the traits. Uh, people tend to, um, who are very expressive of certain genes in the, in the testosterone, uh, in the dopamine system, uh, they're novelty seeking, risk taking, it's called sensation seeking in the academic literature. They're curious, they've got a great many interests. Uh, they make more money uh, than any um, other um, uh, personality style. Uh, but they also lose more money than every personality style. Uh, they're big risk takers. Energetic, restless, uh, not just um, jumping off of, out of airplanes. Uh, I had a wonderful uh, a friend in my life. He died recently, but he, he, he lived in the village uh, in New York, and he, he really read uh, 10 hours a day. Uh, he was very much of an explorer. He just wasn't uh, doing it in physical exploration. Enthusiasm, optimism, independence, self-reliance, impulsivity. Uh, these are the people who will walk into a bar and buy everybody a drink. Uh, mental flexibility and idea generation. That's a really important. Uh, um, creativity seems to be linked with the dopamine system in the brain. In fact, if you give L-dopa to a Parkinson's patient, uh, their creativity will actually go up. Some people turn into great poets uh, or, 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 or artists. Um, on the downside, they tend to be susceptible to boredom. I'm one of them. Uh, I'm going to Ethiopia tomorrow morning. I have now packed. Uh, well, one pair of blue jeans and about 10 books. You know, I, in case I'm on that tarmac for 30 days, I got something to do. Uh, they re tend to be reckless, unreflective. They look out, not in, uh, more manic, uh, insincere. They can be glib, uh, opportunistic, and unpredictable. These are traits that are in one way or another linked with the dopamine system in the brain. Um, I did a study of 178,000 uh, people on chemistry.com. The top word they use is adventure, venture, spontaneous, energy, fun, traveling, outgoing, passion, active. It comes out of, it's, a, it's, a, it's called the lexical hypothesis. It comes out of the 1930s. And um, so you should really, when you're talking to somebody and trying to size them up, not only sort of watch body posture and all this, and, but listen to the words they choose to use because um, it actually comes out of their biology. You can say a lot about them. Um, I think Regina Dugan is a perfect example, uh, head of DARPA, creation, surprise, change, you can't lose your nerve, a woman who really lives in the high dopamine world and is high dopamine herself. Uh, uh, Richard Branson is a great example. I've always thought the rules were made to be broken. Uh, Lang Lang, um, wonderful pianist, flair, dazzling, charisma, superstar, conquered bravado, daredevil tendencies, ebullient, fun to watch, high dopamine kind of guy. Um, I did a study of half a million people. I've got all these zip codes uh, to see where uh, explorers, I call them, because I was working with a dating site. I needed to name these people. So uh, if you're expressive of the dopamine system, I call you an explorer. Uh, they live in New York. They live in the big cities where the action is. They're not down at, in Dallas. <laughs> They're not in Phoenix. They're not even in Las Vegas. They're doing something else. <laughs> Those people very uh, expressive of the serotonin system. They observe social norms, uh, uh, enjoy familiar. They're the ones that'll go to Martha's Vineyard every summer instead of around the world doing different things. Harm avoidant. They're not scared, they're, but they're they're but they're cautious, calm, controlled, stoic. This is why you take a Prozac or Paxil to drive up the serotonin system, so you are uh, calmer. Uh, plans, routines, orderly. They are orderly. As a matter of fact, I have a friend who goes annually to his accountant with his wife. And uh, about 10 years ago, he 
by chance, he leaned on the accountant's desk and he moved the guy's pencil sharpener just a tiny little bit, and immediately the guy moved it back. <laughs> and now every single year, he goes, and at some point he moves the <laughs> pencil sharpener, and every year the guy moves it back. <laughs> Literal, precise, sustained attention, real good with numbers. Um, Want to belong, respect. Religiosity is in the serotonin system, or at least part of it is. And this is one of the reasons that if you take LSD or something, uh, you can have a religious experience, so I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> Loyalty is very interesting. It's one of the my most interesting questions on the questionnaire. It says something like, I can't quite remember the name of it, but it's, uh, the, it says something like, would you rather have interesting friends or loyal friends? Now, we all want interesting friends and we all want loyal friends, but this type must have interesting, uh, have loyal friends, must have them. And the other three types cannot tolerate friends that are uninteresting. Uh, on the downside, the closed-minded, uh, controlling, rigid, uh, stubborn, and moralistic. Um, the top word they use is family. They use trust and trustworthy. They got that one twice. Values, big time on, on values, respect, morals. I think Ben Bernanke's a very good example. Details, data, looking in the past, frugal. I think the president of China, uh, Hu Jintao, he's a perfect example. He's a low key, preserved, very modest. Modesty seems to be in this system, consensus building, <coughs> dislikes extravagance. One thing that's interesting is one of the genes in this, um, in the serotonin system is associated with this uh, consensus building, low key, and that gene is most common in China and Japan. Um, Washington, uh, I've gotten terribly interested in American history, world history, and indeed this guy, uh, the high sir, he was just perfect for being our first president. Uh, the testosterone system, um, people have analytical space. It's called having, being good at rule-based systems, everything from engineering to computers, mechanics, music. Uh, Beethoven was probably uh, very high, it, because it's structural. Now, I, I'm not high testosterone, so I just swing to the beat when I'm listening to music, but uh, these people see the structure of music. Uh, experimental, exacting, uh, rank-oriented, you inject testosterone into a, um, a monkey and they'll begin to fight for rank. Emotionally contained, also much more emotional flooding, uh, particularly rage, uh, decisive, bold, and direct. These are the ones that scream, get to the point. And they all say, well, we are getting to the point. They get to the point. Uh, on the downside, uncompromising, impatient, demanding. Mind blindness is, a, is the concept of the inability to get into somebody else's head and understand um, what they are uh, talking about. A less empathetic and aloof. Top words they use, among them is real. They're the least religious, they gotta have it real. Oh, Larry Ellison is a perfect example. At one point, Craig of Craig Conway thought I was going to shoot his dog. If Craig and the dog were standing next to each other, trust me, I have one bullet, it wouldn't be for the dog. <laughs> I think he's made himself clear. <laughs> uh, certainly Steve Jobs is very much the same. I think Hillary Clinton is a very, you know, there's many more men in this category in every culture. I studied it in six cultures. But um, I think this is a giveaway. When asked why she was attracted to Bill, she said, he wasn't afraid of me. Uh, <laughs> but high estrogen type, their web thinking, it, 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 it comes from the way the brain is patterned in the womb. I don't have time for it, but their contextual, holistic, long-term thinking is very imaginative, uh, good people skills, social skills, Bill, ability to <coughs> climb into your brain and understand how you're thinking. Uh, Pro-social, trusting, introspective. These are the ones, everything means something. Just the way they move, everything means something. You know, Freud once said, um, you know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Not of these folks, not a, not a slightly. Uh, uh, emotionally expressive and diplomatic intelligence. On the downside, they're more scattered, indecisive. They live in a world of it depends. Where do you want to go for dinner? Well, it depends. We can go here, we can go there. Well, make up your mind. I am making my mind. It depends if we can go there. They just, uh, and it's from brain architecture. Uh, placating, they want to please. Ruminating, they never stop thinking. One of the things I say on, on um, Match.com is stop thinking. Some of these women, they go out for their first date and the guy picks his fork up wrong and she says, hey, he won't be any good with the children. You know, she says, just think about dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Gullible, um, hypersensitive, backstabbing, they won't hit you in the face, stab you in the back. 
uh, unforgiving. There's more estrogen receptors in the hippocampus, and uh, uh, they remember, and, and for a good reason, too. For millions of years, women raised the, had the hardest job on Earth, which is raising tiny, helpless babies. They had to, re to remember. Um, biggest, uh, uh, they're the readers of the world, sensitive, kind. These are the words that they use. Uh, Oprah is a good example. Uh, Bill Clinton, I think, is a great example of a male. You know, um, he was the one that cried at their daughter's wedding. His wife didn't cry. He was the one that cried. <laughs> Whole world knows he's a very good talker, and of course, he feels everybody's pain. And I think the um, <coughs> a Charles Darwin is by far. He's connected more dots between people and all living things on this planet. Uh, he's a tremendously uh, high, I think, in estrogen, actually, and in, in dopamine, a wonderful combination for real creativity. I did a study, once again, of uh, 500,000 people. Uh, the high uh, serotonin type, the traditional, lives all through here. All, everything that's loose rolls into California. That's the high dopamine. <laughs> Here we have the high testosterone around Washington, D.C., trying to run the world. Or they're out uh, gambling in the Nevada. Or they're in Alaska shooting the animals. And, uh, and here we got what I call a tree hugger green. We got the uh, high estrogen type uh, and the two coasts, so where the big most readers of the world are. Um, I think these evolved. I've uh, got very little time left. I think they evolved together. Um, but anyway, Matt, what Match.com wanted to know is, why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? And so I looked in 28,000 people several times. And as my, my hypothesis was half right and half wrong, but the bottom line is explorers are the high dopamine, high energy, curious, creative wants, somebody like themselves. The, so do the, uh, the um, high serotonin. Traditional wants traditional. In this case, similarity attracts. Um, when it comes to testosterone and estrogen, opposites attract. And I could tell you why I think, uh, uh, I would hypothesize why these, these biological draw, draws evolved, but I'll just go on to say a couple things. First of all, I think uh, um, it, um, this could play an enormous role in understanding relationships in business as well as in love. Uh, and I hope to move that forward. I'm now working uh, with Lee Silver from uh, from Princeton. We've isolated uh, 63 genes that we, or 64, that we hope we will be able to uh, have uh, 40,000 people take the, my questionnaire and also get a cheek swab and understand the, um, uh, some of the biology, uh, varying biology. It's going to be, we, we will fail. It's, we're a little ahead of the game and it's, it's not going to work, but we're going to try anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And, but what's most important to me, actually, is we've now put 45 people into the brain scanner who've taken my questionnaire first and then put them in the brain scanner. And sure enough, uh, those people who scored high on my proposed estrogen scale had more activity in the mir mirror neuron system and et cetera. We're beginning to map some of the brain circuitry of personality. And in fact, um, I really do think that it is this century that is going to begin to marry uh, biology and, and psychology. So I want to close with this. It's a story. Um, Match.com came to me as I was developing all this. It's taken me several years. And they said, would your questionnaire uh, be um, work in another culture? And I said, if it doesn't work, I have failed. I'm not studying the American brain. I'm studying the human brain. So we went to uh, Tokyo. And we were going to start, um, they were going to start a dating circus in Tokyo. I went. Uh, we talked to journalists for a week. And then came the final night. And the final night came. And I said to my handler, good friend, I said, well, what, is, what, what am I doing tonight? She said, well, we're going to have a little mixer. It's going to be about 300 uh, young Japanese men and women who are uh, going to come to a mixer. And you're going to stand up. You're going to explain these personality styles. And then we're going to have a little icebreaker. And the icebreaker is everybody's going to take your questionnaire. They're going to have a, a rope or a, a, a something around their wrist so that they know which their predominant um, uh, style is. And we're going to roll out uh, four cakes, just the bottom, two, square, two feet by two feet, wedding cakes. And the four different types of, of people are going to go to different parts of the room and decorate that wedding cake. And you are going to make comments on it. 
I said, oh, Christ, this is the nadir of my scientific career. <laughs> so I, first thing I did is I, they did all this thing. There was like 400 people in the room, and, and I walked up to the first wedding cake, which is the high estrogen wedding cake. Now, that cake was smiling at me. It was just saying, please connect, please like me. They even wrote love in little pink letters. It was a really nice, sweet personality cake. Then I go over to the high serotonin cake, the traditional cake. And here's what I see. It's a nice cake. It's formal. It's lush. It's one kiwi, one cherry, one kiwi, one cherry, <laughs> kiwi, one cherry. It's an orderly cake. So then I go over to the high testosterone cake, what I call the director. And the crowd comes, and I go through it. There is no emotion in that cake. It is totally self-contained. But they've decorated around the cake. They thought outside the box. So then I go to the explorer cake, the high dopamine cake, the high energy cake, the curiosity creative cake. And the crowd passes, and the first thing I see is two men hurling fruit at the cake. <laughs> and then I, I walk over, and some guy takes a look at me, who's standing behind me. He grabs some flowers that are in a vase that have nothing to do with this cake and plunge it into the middle of the cake. And this is the cake. Thank you very much. <laughs>